There's nothing special about it. It's just a roll of toilet paper. Now imagine this single piece of toilet paper costing $417. In total, this whole entire roll would cost over $145,000. Now you're probably just thinking I made these numbers up. But based off of Michael Wine's article labeled As Inflation Soars, Zimbabwe's Economy Plunges, this was the actual price of a single roll of toilet paper in Zimbabwe during the late 2000s. This price markup wasn't because of a change, because of a shortage in paper or anything like that. In fact, this price increase came from the hyperinflation of the Zimbabwe, uh, the Zimbabwe economy during its key point in 2008. Based off the Steve Hanks research paper labeled on the measurement of Zimbabwe's hyperinflation, the inflation rate during November of 2008 reached 89 sextillion percent. To show you guys what it looks like, that's what it looks like here. But before I go any further into that, I'm going to tell you guys how Zimbabwe first got into this mess. So Zimbabwe's economy was largely made up of the agriculture industry. In fact, it was one of the main sources of export goods. The one problem with the agricultural industry, though, was that it was mainly made up of almost all white-owned farms. This is because Zimbabwe was under British rule until the 1980s, which left a lot of European culture along with a lot of European people. This problem remained a big topic of discussion during the 90s until the Zimbabwe president, Robert Mugby, created the fast-track land reform. This land reform basically told white farmers to give up their land and give it back to the people of Zimbabwe. The Zimbabwe government believed that in doing this would result in a higher production of crops and overall equality for the people of Zimbabwe. The problem with this is that the owners didn't want to give up their land because they thought it was rightfully theirs. And so this led to hundreds of white-owned farms being invaded and taken over by Zimbabwe war criminals. And because there was a lack of police intervention, most of these farms were either left burned <laughs> either left burned or untended. This led to a major import of agricultural goods which was devastating to their economy because the agriculture was one of their main sources of income. Despite having zero goods to export, their government's response to this was to continue printing out more money. The problem with this is that when you print out more money than what your country is actually making as revenue, the value of that currency goes down. And this is what you call inflation. So as their inflation continued to spiral up, their government continued to inappropriately mass-produce their own currency. And just when the people of Zimbabwe thought their economic struggles were done, their president, Robert Mugby, creates the Land Acquisition Act on May 8, 2002. This act ordered all white-owned farms to be suspended immediately, and eviction orders were given, issuing three months for them to uh, vacate their properties. Because the Zimbabwe parliament agreed with this decision, the farmers had no other choice but to pack their bags and find Another way the Zimbabwe government tried to fix their inflation rate was by trying to regulate the price of goods. Failing to realize any problem with this situation, their government readjusted almost all the prices of all the goods sold in Zimbabwe. Once again, the Zimbabwe government put their country even further into chaos as most of the prices that they uh, made were actually lower than the cost of producing the goods. This was a desperate move by their government because this was a simple supply and demand problem. When you create a price that is lower than the cost of the production to produce a certain good, there's no way that you can make a profit off of that good, and so therefore you would have to shut down your business. And this is what happened with a lot of small businesses in Zimbabwe at this time. They all had to shut their doors and join down the line. So fast forward to the year 2008. The Zimbabwe economy is a complete mess. Based off a study labeled the hyperinflation in Zimbabwe written by Jason Trump, during the during the month of November, their employment rate reached 94%. Just to compare, uh, at its peak point in the Great Depression, our unemployment rate in America was nearly over 20%. So you can really imagine the economic struggle that these people went through during this time. Along with that, during 2008, their smallest note in circulation was $500, which is larger than any bill that we have in circulation right now. And at this point, their inflation rate has skyrocketed to 80, 89 sextillion percent mark that I told you guys about earlier. And just to give you guys like an example 
to understand how drastic the 89 six trillion percent of inflation can do to a country, I'm going to create a little scenario. So say, say this inflation rate happens in the U.S. Sam is your average single male consumer. Sam wants to go to the market and buy an orange. So he goes to the market, grabs his orange, checks out, and the orange is only two dollars. So he takes it home, enjoys it, goes on with the rest of his week. Come next week, Sam comes back and wants to get another orange. So he grabs, he goes to the same market, grabs the same type of orange, but except this time when he's checking out, instead of this orange being one dollar, it's sixty-four dollars. The lonely and deprived of vitamin C Sam still buys the orange but he is now angry about the price market. So Sam still goes home and enjoys his orange and goes on with the rest of his week. He comes back a week later, goes to the same market, grabs the same orange, but except this time, instead of paying $64, Sam pays $4,096 for his orange. But instead of paying for it, Sam puts the orange back and walks home. Because now The inflation rate that Sam experienced is the same inflation rate that millions endured years ago. As you probably realize, this type of inflation rate can only last so long before the cash becomes completely useless. And this is exactly what happened. Near the end of 2008, Zimbabwe's currency became completely useless and the citizens were furious. Thousands of people rioted, even some went to the extent of burning their own money. At this point, the Zimbabwe government finally understood that they could no longer save the currency. And as, and as of early 2009, they officially announced that the US dollar and the South African rand would be the new official currency. This meant that the Zimbabwe dollar was no longer considered an official currency, which made a lot of people mad. But with this change in currency, finally got rid of the inflation rate that was dooming this economy for the past 10 years. So fast forward to today's economy. As of today, Zimbabwe has over nine currencies that are accepted throughout their country, which include the US dollar, Australian dollars, the South and African rand, the Botswana pula, the euro, the British pound, the Japanese yen, the Chinese yuan, and the Indian rupee. As of now, the Zimbabwe dollar is still useless, but maybe one day their government will be able to make a new currency that the Zimbabwe people will be proud of.